Hi everyone, my name is Juliana and today Daniela and I will be talking about Obsessive Compulsive Disorder or OCD. Before we begin, we will be doing a land acknowledgement for the Dish with One Spoon territory where Toronto and X University are located. Toronto is in the Dish with One Spoon territory. The Dish with One Spoon is a treaty between the Anishinaabe, Mississaugas and Haudenosaunee that bound them to share the territory and protect the land. Subsequent Indigenous nations and peoples, Europeans and all newcomers have been invited into this treaty in the spirit of peace, friendship and respect. Our agenda for today will include the following. An introduction, what is OCD, types of OCD, what are obsessions and compulsions, risk factors, as well as warning signs. Then I will pass it over to Daniela, who will go over treatment, misconceptions about OCD, self-care with OCD, supporting someone with OCD, supporting a client with OCD, resources, and important points to remember. To begin, OCD is a type of anxiety disorder. OCD only affects around 2-3% to of people in the USA among adults. It is common for women to be more affected by OCD than men. The signs and symptoms of OCD often begin in childhood or adolescence with the usual onset of symptoms being at 19 years old. There are many common misconceptions about OCD and it is important to be informed correctly about the disorder and Daniela will be speaking more about this later on. Obsessive Compulsive Disorder or OCD is a disorder in which individuals have recurring unwanted thoughts, ideas or obsessions that drive them to do something repetitively. This repetitive behavior are called compulsions. Common compulsions include hand washing, checking on things and cleaning and can significantly interfere with a person's daily routine and social abilities. In individuals with OCD, they have persistent distressing thoughts or repetitive behaviors that are rigid and not performing the specific behavior causes significant distress and anxiety in the individual. There is a bit of a debate regarding how many forms of OCD there are. However, most forms of OCD fall into at least one of four general categories. These include checking, contamination, symmetry and order, ruminations, and intrusive thoughts. Checking items regards to checking items such as locks, alarm systems, ovens, and light switches, as well as believing you may have a medical condition or hypochondria. Contamination includes the fear of things that may be dirty and the compulsion to clean. Symmetry and order refers to the need to have things lined up or organized in a certain way. And ruminations and intrusive thoughts regards an obsession with a certain line of thought. Sometimes these thoughts or images can be violent and disturbing. Individuals with OCD often have to deal with obsessions and compulsions that can be debilitating. Obsessions refer to recurrent and persistent thoughts, impulses, or images that cause significant distressing emotions such as anxiety or disgust. Individuals with OCD may try to ease these obsessions with compulsions, ignore or suppress the obsessions, or distract themselves with another activity. Common obsessions include fear of contamination by people or the environment around them, disturbing thoughts and images, fear of blurting out impulsive insults, extreme concern with order, symmetry, and precision, and recurrent intrusive thoughts of sounds, images, words, or numbers, as well as the fear of losing or discarding something important. Compulsions, on the other hand, refer to repetitive behaviors or mental acts that drive a person to perform in response to an obsession. Performing these behaviors typically prevents or reduces an individual's distress and anxiety related to an obsession. Sometimes these compulsions can be responses directly related to an obsession, such as hand washing due to fear of contamination. In severe cases of OCD, the constant repetition of rituals can fill the day, making a normal daily routine impossible. Common compulsions include excessive or ritualized hand washing, showering, or brushing of teeth, repeated cleaning of household objects, ordering or arranging things in a particular way, repeatedly checking locks, switches, or appliances, constantly seeking approval or reassurance, and repeated counting to a certain number. Oftentimes, individuals with OCD recognize that their obsessions and compulsions are not realistic, 
but they cannot disengage from the obsessive thoughts or stop their compulsive behavior. It is not entirely understood why some individuals develop OCD, but possible causes include family history, biological causes, or environmental factors. Family history means that you're more likely to have OCD if a family member also has the condition. Experts believe it is possible that certain genes could play a part in developing OCD, but they have not yet discovered any specific genes that may cause this. Most people who have OCD also have a family member with the condition. Similarly, with biological causes, experts believe that brain chemistry might play a role in the development of OCD. Some research shows that impaired brain function in certain areas of the brain or problems with the transmission of brain chemicals such as serotonin could contribute to OCD. And environmental factors such as trauma, abuse, or other stressful events can play a role in the development of OCD or other mental health disorders. OCD has a wide range of symptoms and are often grouped based on type of OCD. Cleaning and contamination, symmetry and order, forbidden thoughts, or hoarding. Cleaning and contamination refers to persistent worry about germs or sickness, thoughts about feeling dirty or unclean, persistent fears about exposure to blood, toxic substances, viruses, or other forms of contamination, avoidance of possible sources of contamination, compulsions to get rid of items you consider dirty, compulsions to wash or clean contaminated items, and specific cleaning or washing rituals such as washing your hands or scrubbing a surface a certain number of times. Symmetry and order refers to a need for items or belongings to be aligned in a certain way, an extreme need for symmetry or organization in items, a need for symmetry in actions, a compulsion to arrange your belongings or other items until they feel just right, feeling incomplete when items aren't exact, counting rituals such as needing to count to a specific number or a certain number of items, believing something bad will happen if you don't arrange or organize things in the right way, and organization rituals or specific ways of aligning objects. Forbidden thought symptoms include frequent intrusive thoughts, guilt, shame, and other worry about your thoughts, persistent questioning of your thoughts, persistent worry that you'll act on your intrusive thoughts or that having them makes you a bad person, worry that you will harm yourself or your loved ones, persistent feelings of responsibility for causing bad things to happen to yourself or others, seeking reassurance that you won't act on intrusive thoughts, seeking reassurance that you're not a bad person, and mental rituals to dispel or cancel out your thoughts. Lastly, the hoarding symptoms. These include persistent worry that throwing something out could bring harm to you or someone else, a need to collect a certain number of items to protect yourself or someone else from harm, extreme fear of throwing away an important item by accident, compulsions to buy multiple of the same item even when you don't need this many, difficulty throwing away things because touching them could cause contamination, feeling incomplete if you can't find a possession or accidentally lost or threw it away, and lastly, a compulsion to check or review your possessions. Now we'll discuss treatments. There are various types of treatments that can be used to manage OCD and its symptoms, the first including psychotherapy. Cognitive behavioral therapy is commonly used in the treatment of OCD as it helps to alter the ways an individual thinks. Exposure and response prevention is a technique commonly used, where a therapist will work with a client to put them into an environment that will be anxiety inducing. However, this is done with the intention of learning to minimize and eventually stop thoughts and behaviors related to OCD. Relaxation techniques can also be used to manage stress associated with OCD. Meditation or yoga are some examples of relaxation techniques that can be used to help cope with OCD symptoms. Finally, medication. Selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, or SSRIs, can be used to manage OCD. SSRIs may take anywhere from two to four months to begin working. Some examples of SSRIs that may be used in the treatment of OCD include Lexapro, Prozac, Paxil, or Zoloft. If these do not work, in rare cases, antipsychotic medications may also be used. Misconceptions about OCD. There are several misconceptions about OCD. However, it's important to discuss them as they perpetuate stigma and stereotypes and can lead to negative consequences. The first misconception we'll discuss is everyone who is concerned about being neat or clean has OCD. It is common to see obsessions with cleanliness in OCD, 
but this can also not be OCD, but a personality trait. Experts argue that this is where the misconception stems from and that there is a lack of understanding about the control an individual has over cleanliness. As well commonly believed is that cleanliness is what OCD is about. And while this is a common compulsion, as discussed earlier, there are others that are common to OCD. OCD is the result of stress. Many people believe that OCD is the result of stress, therefore people need to stop stressing. However, this is untrue. While stress can worsen symptoms, it does not cause OCD. This misconception perpetuates stereotypes and harmful stigmas about many anxiety disorders, where it's believed that a person can reduce symptoms by not stressing. The next misconception is OCD is a result of someone's childhood. Commonly believed is that OCD is the result of a dysfunctional home life that causes low self-esteem. However, OCD can be genetic and this plays a role in its development, along with an individual's lived experiences. OCD is not common or it's rare in children. This is untrue. At least one in every 200 children or adolescents have OCD, which is similar to the statistics for diabetes, for instance. This misconception can cause harm as it mitigates the experiences of children with OCD and can lead to an underdiagnosis harming children. Next is, only women can have OCD. OCD actually impacts people of all gender, ages, and different identity factors similarly. This misconception can lead to an underdiagnosis of certain groups with OCD. Finally, you cannot treat OCD. While there is no cure for OCD, it can be managed. As discussed earlier, there are treatments such as medication or psychotherapy. This can be harmful as many people will not be likely to get treatment for their OCD. Self-care with OCD. There are several ways that someone can practice self-care while living with OCD. The first being, look for self-help resources. Self-help resources are created to provide strategies to cope with OCD and have a foundation around cognitive behavioral therapy. Ensure that self-help resources are properly accredited. Some can be found by asking a professional where to find them or for suggestions. Reach out. OCD is a difficult experience for many to talk about. However, finding social support is essential in self-care and coping with symptoms. It can be beneficial to talk to a trusted individual about your OCD so that they can better understand. A technique some people use to overcome the difficulties of opening up is writing down feelings and experiences ahead of time and talking about what was written down with a loved one. It can also be helpful to spend time with loved ones if you are not ready to discuss your symptoms or experiences yet. Find peer supports. Peer supports can be a great way to practice self-care as it will provide a space to talk about your experiences with others who also understand through their own lived experience. This can be done by joining support groups locally or online. Finally, watch your physical health. This can be done by ensuring you get enough sleep, watch what you're eating and making sure you're eating enough, and adding physical activities into your daily routines to help improve mood. Supporting someone with OCD. Someone living with OCD may find it difficult to talk about their experiences and feelings. However, there are many ways to support them. The first being to support them when they do want to talk. To encourage and validate them when they are ready to discuss their experiences, it's important to be patient and remain judgment free. It can be beneficial to learn about OCD and the individual's type to better understand and sympathize with their experiences. Discuss how to help the individual with compulsions. Helping with compulsions can do more harm than good over time. However, for a brief moment, it can be beneficial to help someone with their compulsion and validate their experience. This is because from there, you can work with them to find treatment options. When doing this, it's important to find a middle ground. As it can be harmful to consistently help someone with their compulsions, it can be helpful to discuss your boundaries with them. You can also help them challenge their compulsions and provide emotional support. It can be beneficial to get advice from a professional about how to support the individual. It's also important to remember and accept that sometimes it might be difficult to provide effective support even though you might be trying your best to help. Encourage them to seek treatment. It can be difficult for someone to reach out for professional support, but by having someone with them or supporting them along the way, it can be beneficial. Most important in supporting someone, you must take care of yourself. Establish boundaries, practice self-care, and reach out to others to look after your own mental well-being. Supporting a client. There are a few methods that can be helpful in supporting a client with OCD manage and mitigate their symptoms and behaviors. The first being to explore and discuss what they think might be the consequences of not acting on a compulsion. It's important to discuss external fears such as what might happen in the environment, social fears about how others perceive them, and internal fears such as their own anxieties. It can be critical to use images and have a client picture the consequences 
so that you can work through the probability of them occurring. Work on eliminating rituals that may support their negative behaviors. This can be especially helpful for individuals who find themselves consistently checking. Explain to the client that symptoms might be worse at first when compulsions are ignored. However, they can practice being aware of their own feelings and reactions to help. However, when compulsions arise, they should continue with what they were doing instead of acting on a compulsion. Finally, ask about family support as they can, with permission, help with compulsive behaviors. This can be done by reminding them not to follow through with behaviors or having a set time where individuals will leave when the client is following through with a compulsion. Over time, the amount of time that they wait will be lessened. Now we'll go over resources. The most important thing to take away from this video is that there's supports and help available. For an immediate mental health crisis, reach out to a crisis line for support. For non-immediate mental health support, a useful resource is For a Safer Space. For a Safer Space is a nonprofit that offers accessible and inclusive mental health care. Visit the website for more information if you would like to reach out for support. We will conclude this video with some important points to remember. The first being that OCD is a disorder in which individuals have recurring, unwanted thoughts, ideas of obsessions that drive them to do something repetitively. There are a few types of OCD including checking, contamination, symmetry and order, and ruminations and intrusive thoughts. Obsessions are recurrent and persistent thoughts, impulses, or images that cause significant distressing emotions. Compulsions are repetitive behaviors or mental acts that drive a person to perform in response to an obsession. Some possible risk factors include family history, biological causes, and environmental factors. Warning signs can be grouped based on types such as cleaning and contamination, symmetry and ordering, forbidden thoughts, and hoarding. To continue with some important points to remember, there are a few effective treatments for managing OCD, such as psychotherapy, relaxation techniques, and medication. There are various misconceptions about OCD that perpetuate stigmas and stereotypes. Self-care can be practiced in a variety of ways to help cope with OCD symptoms and stress. There are ways to support someone with OCD, but it's important to also look after your own mental well-being. Practitioners can support their clients and help them overcome compulsive behaviors in a few ways. That concludes this video on obsessive compulsive disorder. Thank you for watching.